Kelly from Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me. In the previous video I showed you how I was making my molds using Pinky Seal and today I'm going to use the pineapple mold and we will be making a pineapple sangria loaf of soap. But the first thing I'm going to do is actually make my pineapple embeds to go on the top of the soap. Now if you're interested in seeing how I made these molds, I'll leave a link to the video up in the top corner for you. But what I did when I, um, when I made this mold, I poured in some melt and pour to clear it out and I weighed how much melt and pour was used in it and I worked out I needed 190 grams to fill each of the, to fill the cavity up. Now I've kind of worked out, I think I'm going to need three of these pineapples which I'll cut up to go onto my soap. So whenever I do uh, my embeds, I always make sure I melt down enough soap to do all the embeds that I want to do so I can make sure that they're the same colour the whole way through. So to do my three pineapples, I'm going to need 570 grams or thereabouts of melt and pour. Now I'm using the Stevenson's No Sweat Clear Melt and Pour and I'm just going to chop it up into some small squares, pop it into my measuring jug and then weigh it out. Once I've got it all cut up, I'm going to pop it into the microwave in short 30 second bursts until it is melted down. You don't want to overheat it, I have done that before and it truly smells when you overheat it and then it also means you can't really use that um, bit of soap either. So I'm going to get this cut up and then I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so we have now melted our melt and pour down and there's no lumps or anything in here. What I'm going to do is colour this with some yellow for my pineapple. And there's a couple of different ways in which you can colour melt and pour soap. When you see that melt and pour, which is still really translucent when you look at it so you can actually see through it, you need to be using a, um, a liquid colorant from what I've experienced. When you use micas, which is what I'm doing today, you tend to get more of the opaque sort of look depending upon how much mica you actually put in. So today, as I said, I'm using mica. I've got some Wellington, sorry, some Wellington mica from my micro obsession and then just to give it a little bit of shine and glitter once it is um, set up I'm putting some extravagant sparkle synthetic mica in here the synthetic micas um, tend to have this real glisten to them and you tend to find that the synthetic micas still have that shine in the soap one in cold process soap once it has set and in melt and pour you get that real glittery sort of look as well so I'm going to mix that in trying not to create too many air bubbles as I do so if you do get any bubbles on the surface of your soap you just need a little bit of rubbing alcohol to spray onto the top I have some 100% rubbing alcohol here so when you spray it it does pop all those bubbles and you can see if you've still got some mica that needs to be stirred in which I do. Now with my rubbing alcohol I always buy it as 100%. Whenever you buy things like 70% or 91% rubbing alcohol it generally is just the isopropyl alcohol, I think that's how you say it, mixed in with water. So when I do sanitise my benches I get my 100% alcohol. In 100ml I would put 70ml of alcohol and a and 30% uh, or 30 ml of water and that is all it really is. So I always buy 100% rubbing alcohol and then I have the ability to make any strength that I kind of want. So that's all now mixed in and all I'm going to do is pour this straight into my pineapple mold here and then I'm going to let it set up, unmold it, melt this back down gently and pour a second pineapple. So if you do have any sort of bubbles on the top there, just give it a quick spritz with some of the rubbing alcohol and that will pop it all. So we'll leave that to set and I'll be back in a moment to make another one. Okay, so my pineapple here has set up just enough that I can come in and start unmolding it here and then get my next one poured. 
So I'm just going to gently pull that out of the mould. You can see we have some really nice fine definition there. And around the edge here you can see the skin of what was on my original pineapple. So what I'm going to do is just pour some more melt and pour into that pineapple there and let that one set up. And then I'm going to do a little bit more work to this piece that we've just unmoulded. So that is now filled up and I should have enough left to do one more. I'm just going to give that a spritz on the top to get rid of those bubbles. Now what I have here, I have some chartreuse mica. I have a little bit of elusive. And I also have that extravagant gold mica here as well. What I'm going to do is just take a little brush here and I'm going to dip my brush into the mica and I'm just going to gently start applying mica all to the edge of my pineapple ring here just to give it that sort of look that we've got some skin still on the pineapple. Now when I've unmolded this, this is still actually quite warm to touch so I know that the mica is going to stick to this melt and pour and I'm just going to keep going around decorating it up. I can see that as I'm brushing this mica on it's really pulling that gold through from out of the, the pineapple or from out of that yellow itself as well. So we're just going to keep doing this. Hopefully it gives it a bit more of a realistic look as I go round. And then I'm going to just finish it off with a little bit of gold. And then when... This is, I'm going to leave it overnight just to set up really nice and firm and then we'll come back and I will make the soap tomorrow. Okay, so the pineapples have set up overnight nicely. I also added a little bit of mocha brown mica onto them as well just to get that sort of brownish tinge that you often see. And all I'm now going to do, I have already cut one of them up to make sure they were going to be the right size. I am going to cut it in half. And then I'll cut them in half and then cut those halves into halves as well. So we end up with, I think it's eight pieces per pineapple. got my pineapple pieces all prepped it's on to making our pineapple sangria soap okay so we are using pineapple sangria from aroma and it's a nice sweet pineapple fragrance with notes of ginger a little bit of coconut and mint it has got 0.76% vanillin, so I'm going to be doing a yellow base for my soap with a little bit of a dark red drop swirl for the sangria. And I'm also going to drop in a little bit of green as well, just to represent the, the leaves from off the pineapple um, within the soap. Now, in my bucket, I have my oils. My oils are usually always looking pretty cloudy, even when at room temperature of about 27 degrees, because I put shea butter in. Shea butter is one of the namesakes for my business of soy in shea and the reason I like to include it in my soap is because shea butter has some unsaponifiables or in other words some of that shea butter actually doesn't turn into soap and it leaves it within the soap itself which leads to a really nice moisturizing bar. The only downside is is even at 27 degrees my oils still look quite milky and cloudy. So what I'm going to do now is pour my lye water into my oils. I'm then going to mix it up and then pour it out for the colours. colors today I have some chartreuse mica all of my micas today are from my mica obsession and we're going to add a little bit of the chartreuse I expect that it will turn into a funky shade of green before actually morphing back to this nicer shade of green here I am going to use some rosewood mica 
as well and that is to represent the sangria part of the the drink here so we'll add that in there that's probably more than enough and then into my big bucket i'm going to add a bit of a mix of the wellington mica and the extravagance mica like i used in the pineapples it's a little bit hard to see on the camera but that extravagant mica really does add a glistering effect to the melt and pour and being a synthetic mica it will do exactly the same in my main soap batter as well. So I'm going to give these a quick mix up and then I'm going to hand stir in my fragrance oil. red has actually gone a little bit more brown than what I really wanted so I'm going to add in just a tiny amount of the really red um, mica from Nurture Soap just to try and get it to turn back into that reddish sort of colour. I've got the fragrance oil all stirred in here and so far touch wood it is playing nicely though it ha fragrance oils have tricked me before what I'm going to do is just go and grab the mold and we're gonna start pouring in so I am just gonna do a drop swirl into my um, big mold here so I'm going to start with the yellow and I'm going to pour a good portion of the mold with the yellow here. And it is still staying nice and fluid so we should get some really wispy looking swirls in this one today. And then I'm going to go for my red. I'm making sure I get into the corners of the mold. And then I'm going to come back down the middle. Oops, and I completely missed the mould there, so I'll just get that out. Oh, lovely and messy today. Oh, all right, I think I've got most of that back into my mould. And that ends okay. So I'm going to pour in just a little bit of the green. So I've not actually made much of the green up. I just want it more of a bit of an accent colour in here. So I'm just going to... Make sure it goes up into the corners so that every bar of soap gets a little bit of that. We'll come back to the red. And it sounds like my dog's just seen someone walking theirs up the street. She often sounds like she's absolutely possessed. It's quite funny listening to her. Alright, I'm going to pour in a bit more of the yellow. And I'm going to get... Let Sorry, I'm going to let the yellow move some of that other colour around to create a bit more of the swirl. And then I'm just going to keep um, topping up this until I've used all, all my colours. soap batter actually does thicken on you in your pot occasionally you can get away with actually stirring it up and that will loosen your batter back up so I'm going to do that with this just to get the last of that batter out and now you can actually see now I've stirred that it is actually flowing quite easily again so I'm going to get the last of this yellow out and then scrape out all of the jugs here. And then I'm going to come back and do some piping on the top. Okay, so I have got my buckets 
completely scraped out. I'm now going to go and mix up some more soap batter, which I'm going to add some titanium dioxide to, and we're going to come back and pipe the top. Okay, so my icing has, or my piping has now set up nicely. I have in my piping bag here a 11, no, an 8M tip it was. And all I'm going to do is put little dollops across my soap here until I have filled it up. And then we'll decorate it with those pineapples. I've got some little soap curls as well as some paper straws to go in here. So if you didn't already know, I am on Instagram and I'll leave my little handle here so you, if you're interested in following, you can follow along. Now, as I always say, I'm in Australia, but I do follow a lot of soap makers who are in America and I see you guys are coming into fall. We're actually coming into spring and I am so looking forward to it. This winter has been quite a chilly winter. It's been very fresh, sort of cold, a bit different to what we usually get. One of those sort of colds where you just can't warm up. And we've also had a very, very dry winter. And this week we have had lots and lots of rain, which is brilliant for our farmers. So I think we're going to have some really nice spring weather this year. But if you do follow along with me on Instagram, you would have seen me doing my um, my pineapple moulds earlier. And you also would see that I have started to go for walks. I decided the other day that I really needed to start setting aside a little bit of time just for me. So I decided that each day I was going to take half an hour out and go for some walks around our estate. I have put it off because our house is right up the top of a big hill and it doesn't matter which way we walk, I always have to walk up this big hill unless I take the real cheats way out and drive down the bottom, then do one of the circuit laps and drive back up the hill. And I have done that, I usually take the dog down the dog park when I do that so I have an excuse to actually drive somewhere. But if you do follow along with me on Instagram, I do take you on a couple of those walks. And the other day when we went, I walked down a path. I actually didn't have my dog with me that day. And I came across lots and lots of kangaroos as I was going for my walk. So you can actually see that. I post those sort of things on my Instagram account there. And so I'm hoping that over the next sort of few weeks, my goal is to walk at least four times a week. I'm just gonna go grab some more icing here. Okay, so I've got some more icing. So as I was saying, my goal I've set myself is to go for a walk at least four times a week, whether that is taking my dog with me or not. Um, that is my ultimate aim is to go four times a week. And I'm pleased to say that this week I did go for my four walks. And on two of those walks, I actually went out in the rain as well. It was just a very light mist of rain. But on the first morning I went for my walk, I took my younger dog with me. She doesn't fall into routine very easily, but she decided that this whole walking thing is a good routine. So by the third day of going on walks, she begged to go out on this third morning that it was raining. So I put on the raincoat. I actually drove down to the dog park because I knew it was all flat. And I figured if I'm going to do this in the rain, I'm going to walk on flat ground. And we went down there for the day. The next day I went it was again raining and that was the day I saw all the kangaroos but I had to leave the, the younger dog at home. We've discovered that when we take the younger dog out even just down to the vet and leave the older dog at home apparently she actually howls and she's never ever ever done that her whole life but it's only just been something that she has apparently started doing. Our neighbours were pretty good about it. They just let us know that she was doing it. So now we make sure that we don't leave her home alone without the um, younger dog. The older dog, she's an English Springer Spaniel and she's about 11 years old now and she just can't cope with walking up the hill. She is in agony for the rest of the day if we do take her. So I can only really take her if I know I'm going somewhere flat 
and I need to have my husband with me because the vet has actually told me I shouldn't be walking the two dogs together because the younger one is just so big and boisterous. If she pulls, she's going to hurt us both. So unfortunately, I can only actually walk one of them at a time these days. Okay, so we've got our piping all on there now and it's time to get these embellishments on. Okay, so we'll come in from this angle so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing now. I have actually cut the ends off my pineapple because I did think they may be a little bit too big. But what I'm going to do is just pop them in to the edges here, making sure I stay between the lines on my mould here. And I may even go and put them so I've got pineapples on each side of my soap here. Now whenever I do make, oops, make my melt and pour in beds I never fragrance my melt and pour so because I've chopped the ends of my pineapples off I'll actually end up putting that into just one of the Tupperware containers mark down what colors I used so I know for future soaps but it does mean I can melt that melt and pour back down for any other project that I want to do so I can make like little soap balls or if I've got I don't know, there could be all sorts of different molds I've got tucked away up on the shelf there, but I can actually use that yellow in another project and it doesn't go to waste because it's not actually fragranced. So I'm gonna keep popping these in here and then we'll come back and put the next bit on. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces of pineapple in there. What I now have, I have um, some paper straws that I've cut down to size and I'm just going to pop a paper straw into each of the soaps here. I like to use the paper straws over the plastic straws, not only because I feel that the paper straws are better um, for our environment, but because if someone does forget to remove that paper, that straw from out of their soap, and I always put warnings on there to remove the straws. Paper straws will just go really soft and mushy in the shower or bathtub and won't actually hurt or poke you. So that's why I like my paper straws in here. Plus you can get paper straws in some really great colors. I did choose to use black today because I just felt that um, I only had pink, green and blue and I didn't feel that any of those colours were really going to match in with the rest. I suppose the green would have, but too late now. We've got black in there. So we'll keep popping those in. And then hopefully I've got room to put my little soap curls that I've made, which are meant to kind of represent the, the little leaf that they embellish the cocktail with as well. So let's pop that on there. And then I have just these little soap curl so it was some melt and pour that I poured and then I um, got a a potato peeler and just pulled it down the soap until I ended up with these little curls and I'm just going to kind of stick them in here I think That is the last of the little soap curls going on there. I really feel that this needs a little bit of glitter on it. So I am going to go for, I have some Bella glitter, which is like a pinky sort of color. This is from my micro obsession. And I'm just going to give it a really light spritz just over the top. Okay, so here is pineapple sangria. It is smelling amazing. It is so sweet and pineapple-y. It's really glittery with all that glitter and mica, especially on those pineapple pieces. I'm going to leave it sit here for about 18 to 24 hours, and then we'll come back and cut it and see what we've got on the inside. 
So I am back to cut pineapple sangria. It is smelling gorgeous and those pineapples are still looking really good there. I'm going to try and cut this on the multi-bar cutter and see if we can get it lined up so that the wires don't cut any of these embeds. So we'll just have a quick look here. So I've got that where I want it. Let's just double check. And that is looking like it's going to go through. But I think my straws are going to be on the way on this side. So what we might do is turn it on to its side. And I'm just going to rest it off the edge of the cutter so that everything is butted up against the edge here. We'll try that again. And that's still looking really good. So I'm just going to go straight down. You can feel that it is moving slightly, so I'm just going to put my hand on the top. Now this has ended up actually sitting for about 48 hours because we went out for a family dinner on the, the day after I made this and then I had markets the next day. So it's been a little while, so it has set up quite firmly. But we are through. And we'll grab this first piece off here, and that is a really pretty swirl. So, and each piece has got that pineapple, what's meant to be like the little pineapple leaf and a straw, and that swirls come up really nice in there too. The colours really complement each other. So we'll pop that over here, and I'm very pleased to say I was a little bit worried I was going to end up with some glycerin rivers, but I don't have any of that in here at all. Got a tiny little air bubble, but that's all right. I'll probably plane this piece off just to get rid of that. But the colours are perfect. It smells so sweet and very strong of pineapple. And that's a really pretty swirl on that piece. I'll grab this next one as well. So I hope you have enjoyed watching me make my pineapple sangria. If you were interested in seeing how I made the mold to do that pineapple, I have left links to the video up in the top corner there for you. And, oh, I'll grab this piece here. Oh dear, my pineapple's fallen out of this one. I will probably get a, actually that's still quite soft on the top, so I may be able to push that in. Maybe put a little bit of melt and pour on there as well just to help glue that piece in there too. So as I was saying, I hope you have enjoyed watching me make my pineapple sangria soap. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below and I will get back to you with any questions as soon as I can. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell sign. Oh, and I've lost another pineapple. Oh no. <laughs> so hit the little bell sign and I will. Um, it will let you know the next time I upload a video. I'm going to go and fix my pineapples so they stay stuck into the soap. And until next week, have a good one. Bye.